We're going to look at regression analysis in Excel in three different ways, using charts, using a scatter plot, using formulas, and then using something called the analysis tool pack if you want something more sophisticated or if you have multiple X variables. So here we have a data set that includes the attendance to a speaker event that I organize and how many people on Facebook say they're going or attending. And this is actual real data for an event that I tend to organize every few weeks. So let's get going here. So firstly, using charts, this is probably the easiest way. What you can do is you can select these two columns and then go to the insert tab and we're going to choose the scatter plot and build it here. By the way, my name is David Benheim and I make tons of videos every week on Excel, Power BI, Google Sheets, PowerPoint, Team, Zoom. If you're using tech at the workplace, then I'm covering it on my channel. So subscribe if you want to get more videos like that. So here we have it. And in order to get the regression, which is also known as the line of best fit, you can press the plus button and choose a trend line. And then I can click on the arrow and choose more options because what I want to see is the equation and the R squared. The equation is kind of saying, well, for every time that Facebook responders increases, then how does that affect attendance? And then this is plus, this is the intercept. So it's essentially saying if no one on Facebook replies, I should get 67 people. And then I get roughly one sixth of the people who say that they are going and attending. The R squared determines how good this model is at predicting the result. This is important for this kind of event because we pay get paid a different amount of money if we have more than 100 people or not. So I'm able to use this regression equation to backtrack it. So my output is 100 and I know that 100 equals 0 0.1868 x plus 67. So I want to figure out what x is. So I can do equals 100 minus 67.385. And then I can do equals this divided by 0 0.1868. And then I get 175. So it means that I want the Facebook responded to be 175 in order to reach my 100 goal. Of course, it's not an exact science. It's a line of best fit. You can see that a lot of things fall above or below the line, but this is the one that's kind of expected in the middle there. So we can do the same using formulas. There's three formulas in particular. There is one that is called slope. So it equals S L O press tab. And then I get my known Y's and my known X's. So my known Y's, I'm going to do the attendance, comma, and then my known X's, I'm going to do the Facebook responders, close my brackets, and I get this same number here. Uh, it's two more decimal places, but I can reduce that there. And it's the same as this number on the chart and the same one that I use in this equation. Intercept equals intercept, it's essentially the same thing. Known wise is again the attendance using control shift down there to select them. Uh, close my brackets and I get this same number. And R squared is equals RSQ. It says returns the square of the Pearson product moment correlation. <laughs> That's the full name of the R squared. And again, known Y's, comma, known X's like that and these numbers are identical. So the third one is needed if you want more statistics or if you want to do this on multiple variables. So where you've just where I'm just looking at does one variable i.e. Facebook responded affect this, I can plot this in a chart and I can use these formulas, but if I have multiple things like for example, I want to test whether the attendance is influenced by a combination of the people on Facebook that said going or attending and the number of speakers at the event, which range from three to six, and the average price of beer at the venue. Um, so I'm going to compare this to all three of them. And 
let's rearrange my data. So I'm going to insert and let's cut and paste it like this. It just makes it easier if it's set out this way. So um, let's clear some space with these charts, moving them out the way. And also let's zoom out so we can see the whole data set. So we're going to create this, the summary output, because this is going to give us the more advanced type of regression and what to do with multiple variables. So I can go to the data tab and I can choose data analysis. If you don't see that, that's because you need to make some adjustments. I'll show you that later on in this video. So here you can do all sorts of statistical things. I'm gonna do the regression and I'm gonna press okay. And I have input Y range. I'm gonna move this closer as well like this. So input Y range, I'm gonna click there and I'm gonna choose the attendance, including the header and then enter input X range. And here I'm going to choose these three columns. You can choose as many columns as you like. And then I'm going to, to tick labels because I do have the headers on each of my columns. I'm gonna leave the rest of the stuff as default and including where to put this out. Just means it's gonna create a new worksheet here. You can even rename that if you want to. So I could say attendance. Uh, or a new workbook, or you can do it in a cell range in the same sheet or wherever you like. I'm gonna press okay. And then it creates this. Um, I need to sort of double click there to get it to read everything. So as you can see, I have a, a higher R squared than before. This is 0 0.69. It does it through three variables. So these are the three variables. If I didn't tick the box, then it gives me a slightly less good output. So let me show you that. If, for example, I go to the data tab and I choose data analysis regression, it does default with where you started, but let's say I start on row number four for both. Row number four is the first row of data, take off labels, press okay. Just gives me this X variable one, two, three. It's not as nice. I like it to give me the labels. So that's why I choose that. So um, I'm not gonna go into too much detail about what all of these are because it's quite deep statistics, but you should be looking, the p-value is important, you should be looking for something that's less than 0 0.05. Um, this is times 10 to the power of, so these are very, very low. Uh, this one, for example, is too high, so this one will be deemed to be not accurate. Uh, you are looking for the adjusted R square value usually when you have multiple variables. And essentially this is the intercept. Like before we had the intercept and the slope, this is the intercept and these are the slopes. Essentially it means that, let's say a scenario, I have a bear price of $3. I have um, five speakers and I have uh, Facebook respondents of 200. This model is going to predict that the number of people I get is going to be equals essentially three times the coefficient of the bear price. This is negative note because as the bear price gets more expensive, fewer people come as you might expect. <laughs> and then I can do plus five speakers times the speaker coefficient plus respondents times the respondent coefficient plus then the intercept. And I should get 106 people if these three things are my criteria. Uh, observations as well. So it's important to have uh, enough observations. They say roughly 30 should be the least amount that you have here. I have 39, so that's probably enough. And these things, degrees of freedom and uh, the t-stat all of these are other important statistics but i'm not going to go through that in this video so there you have it that is three ways of using excel for regression analysis the last thing i'm going to show you is how to get this to pop up so you need to go to file and then options you only do this one time and then you need to go to the add-in section and manage excel add-ins choose go and then make sure that you tick this that says analysis tool pack so if I untick it and press okay, 
then in my data tab, I don't see it. But if I redo it, add in go, and I tick this, then in my data tab, I'll see data analysis. And as I mentioned before, there's a lot of things here. ANOVA analysis of variance, correlation, covariance, descriptive stats, um, histograms. There are, there are a few ways to do histograms as well in Excel, but I tend to not use this method. But there you go, the analysis tool pack. All right, so I hope you found that helpful. If you did, then check out the other videos on my channel. As I said, I release one per week, but I do switch it up between the different apps. So check out my channel and subscribe if you want to see more videos on Excel, Power BI, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using tech of the workplace, then I'm covering it on my channel. Thanks for watching.